Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Gushers. Gushers! Um, so this is a show where we take a game that one of us really, really likes and the other one absolutely hates, and we gush about it, try to convince the other person that it's uh, actually, it actually yeah. is a good game. Yeah, that, that's kind of what this show is about, yeah. So today, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite games ever. This is not the real one, it's, I don't have a physical copy, but this is King's Quest. What? This is our placeholder. It's not the uh, game we've been playing? Just, just no, now? this is uh, something else. Oh. Anyway, um, it is a point and click adventure game, and we have a prince and a princess, and they want, they, they want to be with each other, but there's forces oh. keeping them apart. Oh. So, so we'll, Great. We'll, I'll go into a little more detail in a minute. Yeah, because uh, I'm just thinking of Legend of Zelda right now. No, but let's jump right in. Okay. Whee! <laughs> ah, King's Quest. Possibly the greatest and most storied franchise in all of PC gaming. It has epic journeys, romance, fair brutality. But more importantly, the games have always provided that sense of wonder and excitement that you'd always expect from adventure games. And as the series matured, each one broke new ground in just how expansive and ambitious the genre could be. Whether it was the day-night cycle in 4 or the introduction of an actual point-and-click interface in 5, the next one always brought something new to the table. It's like, wait, so King's Quest didn't actually start out as a point-and-click adventure? Nope. For the first four games in the series, you actually had to control your character with a keyboard and had to type in whatever you wanted to interact with. I mean, this was clunky, weird, and unintuitive by today's standards, but back in the 80s, this was revolutionary. By having your character actually move within the backgrounds, King's Quest became known as the world's first 3D adventure game. So the first thing you'll notice when you start up the game is the presentation. I mean, look, the Sierra logo has an actual real mountain. Now, Six is easily the best looking game in the entire series. I mean, the characters are lush and colorful, and the hand-drawn environments actually make it feel like you're in a living, breathing world. And even the cutscenes, with what little movement they have, really help in adding to the game's whole cinematic feel. Now, it may seem trivial at first to mention graphics in an adventure game, but think about King's Quest VII, and think about how awful the characters looked. I mean, really, just look at them. Just look at these characters. Look at them! I mean, they were all poorly designed and more often than not distracted you from the experience. In addition to the look and feel of the game, King's Quest VI actually sounds amazing as well. The narrator no longer recites his lines from inside of a dumpster. Inside the barrel, Graham sees an old rotting fish. And his silky smooth voice actually adds to the entire storybook atmosphere. The guard returns a moment later with a majestic looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle, but reflects a will of iron. Oh yeah... Of course, the game isn't all bells and whistles. I mean, the puzzles are the real me of this game. When you first start off, they may seem pretty simple. I mean, pick up coin, buy stuff with coin, press clown... I mean, you know, the usual stuff. But you won't realize until later on in the game that there really is something special about the way the puzzles are designed. Every little thing you pick up, no matter how insignificant it may seem at first, plays a role in rejoining you with the princess. But first, I'd like to backtrack a little bit and thank Sierra for introducing to the world what I like to call the Great Adventure Game Conundrum. And this states that the only thing that will work in any given situation is the one the developers choose. I mean, that's great and all, I mean, I love a challenging puzzle, but when you're forced down a path with little to no logic behind any of your decisions, that's when you're going to have problems. Screw common sense, let's just throw the custard pie at the Yeti! And so this also presents another problem that many of the previous games in the series suffered from, which were dead ends. And so do you remember that pie? Did you eat it? Did it taste good? And now you're stuck with absolutely no method to advance in the game? Well, too bad! Go reload your save from three hours earlier and try again. But one of the best things to come out of King's Quest VI, and the reason why it's so good, is the fact that so many of the puzzles in the game were built around the concept of player choice. Now, I'm not talking about the good versus evil choices you find in modern games. I'm talking about the Oh god, this better be the right item kind of choice. There will be times when you're faced with the decision of what item to pick up, what item to take, and knowing that taking one item over another might drastically change the way the game ends. And this helps in keeping the gameplay fresh and actually makes it feel like you have control over your character. 
The game even takes it a step further by having multiple endings depending on what you actually accomplish in the story. It isn't just disguising linearity with these choices, you actually have a say in what the ending's like. Like right here, you can uncover treasures that will end the feud between the Warring Islands. Or here, you can rescue the princess's parents from the land of the dead and they'll actually be alive at the end of the game. Well, you know, it does sound a little bit similar to the way the Mass Effect trilogy comes to an end. Throughout the course of all three of those games, the decisions that you make actually do have a very real impact on the game's finale. And it's really cool as a player to see that the choices you've made actually do have some kind of an effect. Yeah, I'd say it's a pretty good example of how the mechanic has endured the test of time. But the real beauty of King's Quest VI is that none of these things will necessarily make the ending better. Sure, you can earn more points by doing more stuff, but the points literally do not matter. The game's main purpose is more about discovery and writing your own story with the characters and situations you're given. You want to break into the castle using magic? You can do that. You want to dress up as a woman and trick the guards into laying you in? I'm not going to judge you, but you can do that. King's Quest VI has so many ways to go about situations, and it took a very bold step forward in defining just how a game should present player choice. Today, there are countless games that attempt to incorporate a morality system, and provide a way for the player's actions to feel meaningful. I mean, you have Bioshock, Fallout, Infamous, and the list goes on. And people praise these games for how they use it, but their interpretation of player choice is somewhat short-sighted. Asking a player to choose between two sides is not morality. It's binarity. It's asking them a yes or no question. It's flipping a coin. In King's Quest VI, everything that you feel about the characters in the story comes from the choices that you've made throughout the game, and not the choices that the game has decided for you. If you beat the game without doing jack shit, you're still gonna win. You still get the girl, you still get married, and you still have a wedding. But with all the different paths you can take, you'll feel empty knowing that their lives could have been just a little bit better if you'd tried harder. And despite this being a game in which your first image of the main character is this? The way it presents choice to the player makes it feel way more human than so many other games out there. It even manages to break through the stereotype of adventure games being slow and tedious by including scenes that keep the players on their toes. The game has enough moments of pure holy shit, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, that can make you forget about what kind of game you're actually playing. And I feel that's what really makes a game a good one. You know, the ability to transcend genres and cliches and to break out of the norm and to make it feel like you're actually experiencing the game rather than just playing it. Yeah, no, that's, that's always good. I mean, it's more like you're helping to write the story rather mm -hmm. than just kind of read through from A to B. Yeah, I mean, like I want it to feel like the decisions I make had some sort of weight on the outcome rather than just being along for the ride. I feel that it does a better job in doing that than any other game that I've played. Yeah, I can see why you like it so much, actually. Well, that's why you should play it. Oh, we got... Well, this not... Wait, we have... What is this game then? What is, what is that That's King's Quest VI, what are you talking about? What's underneath it? Um, Tiny Toons? Buster... Get, yeah, get that out of here. Uh, but anyway, that's about all the time we got, I think, for this episode. So, Pretty much uh, done here. Yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. As always, Thank we you. do appreciate it. Um, if you like what you saw, then like, comment, subscribe. Free. Do what the monkey says. Like, comment, subscribe, uh, and check out our other shows here at Sick Aya. All right, see you next time.